Our news from the Hill segment tonight. Today, House Speaker Paul Ryan tamped down expectations for a new Obamacare repeal bill. Ryan said that a renewed effort to repeal the bill is still at the conceptual stage, whatever that means. Last month, a bill to repeal Obamacare stalled after disagreements between the White House and members of the conservative Freedom Caucus thwarted the bill. Hear what Speaker Ryan had to say today. We want our members to talk with each other about how we can improve the bill uh, to get consensus. Um, those productive talks are happening. We're at the concept stages right now. Uh, the vice president has been instrumental in bringing together different groups from our conference to talk about concepts. So right now we're just at that conceptual stage about how to move forward in a way that can get everybody to 216. It's important that we don't just win the votes of one caucus or one group, but that we uh, get the votes and the consensus of 216 of our members. And that's kind of where we are right now. So it's premature to say where we are, or what we're on, because we're at that conceptual stage right now. With me now, Republican from Ohio's 6th District, Congressman Bill Johnson. Congressman Johnson, good to see you, sir. Good to see you, too. Well, I can't see you, but good to hear you. Well, thanks so much for being here either way. We had a great conversation the last time you were on the show. You know, we're both from Ohio. I grew up in the Buckeye State as well. But, sir, let me ask you about what's going Absolutely. on. Let's, let me ask you what's going on in the House right now when it comes to Obamacare repeal. Is there a lot of animosity between uh, the more moderate, the establishment Republicans and the Freedom Caucus right now? No, you know, I think what the American people are seeing, and I thought about this the other day, you know, in, in the 60s, uh, America saw the Vietnam War play out on television. It was the first time uh, that America saw a war uh, brought into their living room. What we see playing out on national television right now is the legislative process. Uh, it's not pretty. Uh, it's oftentimes ugly. It's complex. Uh, it requires a lot of deliberation and debate and back and forth because you got to get a lot of people with a lot of different views uh, around the table and everybody come away uh, with something that they want out of the deal. So it's not always pretty. And, uh, yeah, you know, years ago, five years ago, ten years ago, you didn't see this kind of thing on national television, but today you do. One thing that we're absolutely unified on is that Obamacare has failed the American people and we've got to find a way forward. I believe we'll find that way in the end. Right. And that's what I always say. The road to uh, a bill becoming a law is lined with potholes. And that's exactly how our founding fathers intended it. So we don't get crushed with too many laws being too easily made. Congressman, clear this up for me then. That's Congressman, exactly right. Congressman Collins said that moderate Republicans won't even take phone calls from the Freedom Caucus, that they're actually not interested in collaborating with them because they feel, moderate Republicans feel that the Freedom Caucus is at fault for derailing the Obamacare light bill that failed a week or so ago. Is that true? Well, I'm not going to speak for, uh, for anybody else other than myself. You know, I learned uh, in my 26 and a half years in the Air Force that, uh, you know, you don't always get what you want, that when, the, uh, when you're in the thick of the battle uh, and you're trying to do the right thing, sometimes the fog and friction of the battle requires you to, to make a change and to go right instead of left. Um, and so I'm, I'm not going to, uh, uh, I certainly will talk to anyone within our conference about how to uh, about how to move this forward, because the people that I represent, they've been the ones that have been hurt the worst. You know, I, I got I got a call just the other day, eighteen thousand dollar a year premium, nine thousand dollar deductible before the insurance company pays a dime. That's twenty seven thousand dollars out of that family's pocket. And you know, I represent an area where the average income, and you know it well. Uh, is just a little over $30,000 a year. Right. That's a heavy price tag to pay for health insurance. Right, exactly. Those are my people, white working class Ohioans. You know, we don't have that kind of, we don't have that kind of money back there to, to pay $18,000 in premiums and then have to pay for the actual medical expenses out of pocket because we can't reach the deductibles. Congressman, what's next, though? I feel like Congress is giving us a binary choice, in my opinion, somewhat of a false choice of either letting Obamacare, you know, die, leaving it just how it is and letting it implode, or passing this bill that nobody on either party or either side of the factions of the Republican Party are happy with, what does come next? Well, well, I, th I think at the end of the day, we're going to come to a solution that, that the majority of our Republican House are, are going to agree with. But, but you bring up a good point. The choice really is binary. Um, we either let Obamacare completely fail, the, the individual market collapse, uh, premiums continue to skyrocket. They're going to go up again next year. 
um, and driving more and more Americans onto Medicaid. And those are some of our people as well. Uh, you come from that region, people that have been driven onto the Medicaid rolls because either their companies have shut down or, or because they've been laid off or, or driven to part-time work or they simply can't afford an insurance policy on a collapsing individual market or the exchanges, so they have no choice if they're 138 percent of the federal poverty level of going on to the Medicaid rolls. That's not where they want to be. And so we really are given a binary choice. Either we move this bill um, uh, and in all of its imperfections and we begin that long track back toward uh, putting health care decisions back in the hands of doctors and their patients, uh, or we stick with Obamacare. And I don't think my people, uh, they do not want to stick with Obamacare. And this is something that we have, to, we have to realize too. And I want to make sure that our listeners understand this. We can't underestimate the power of the private enterprise, the free enterprise, market-driven economy that has built the greatest nation on the planet to respond to these kinds of reforms to putting health care back uh, in the hands of, of, of the American people. Right. You're going to see premiums come down. Competition is going to come into the system. You're going to see the states begin to take charge of, of regulating their health care uh, industry, their insurance industry. It's going to be a very, very different day. I have a lot more confidence in the American people than I do in uh, in unelected bureaucrats here in Washington. Right, and that that's, that makes two, that makes two of us, sir. Let me push you back just just a tiny bit on this binary choice because I agree with you. We have a binary choice in an, in as much as we either leave Obamacare to die or we pass something to repeal it. But I don't think that the binary choice has to be this particular bill. I mean, you talk about the free market. I agree with you 100%. I think we've seen evidence in our nation that the free market uh, rises to the occasion and comes to people's aid here. But that's not what this legislation encompasses. There's three stages to the current legislation. The actual legislation, then sending it over to Health and Human Services, to Tom Price, secretary there, and then it would have to be a full repeal, which, since the first piece of legislation used the budget reconciliation, would have to have pretty bipartisan support with Democrats. All of that amounts to, first of all, unsustainable because the Democrats won't cooperate, but second of all, it doesn't really leave the free market in charge of health care. It puts Health and Human Services. Um, no, no I, I disagree, and, and you and I are friends, and, and we can agree to disagree, and I disagree with you, and here's the reason why. We, you mentioned in your last segment, uh, because I was listening, uh, you have to consider the politics. Don't like having to consider the politics, but you have to consider the politics of this city. And the politics of this city right now is that we simply don't have the numbers to get Senate Democrats to agree with us to do anything to, uh, to reshape, fix, repair, uh, do anything with the Affordable Care Act. The budget reconciliation process, step one of those three phases that you talked about, is our only option right now with the numbers that we have in the House and the Senate to be able to move the ball forward. Is it the best way? No. Ideally, it would be great if we could sit down rep with uh, Republicans and Democrats and craft a solution. But you know as well as I do, because they have said as much, the, right. the Democrats are not going to work with us to do that. So we have to take uh, and, and play the hand that we're dealt. And we either move the needle forward and we stay on the field to fight another day. Because here's what I believe we're also underestimating. We got a new quarterback on the team. Uh, Donald Trump has indicated that he's willing to sit down and talk with anybody, Republicans and Democrats about how to get this done. And so once we get this step one done, the budget reconciliation process, and we begin to see the individual market begin to rebound, you're going to see that there are going to be some Democrats that are going to want to see uh, some repeal actions and some replace actions that are going to benefit the people that they represent. I think it'll be a very, very different right. day then than it is now. Right, and I guess, I guess that is... That precisely is where we disagree is I don't think Democrats are going to want to uh, sit down with Republicans for this stage three because the first stage you're right we don't have to sit down with Democrats we can use budget reconciliation the second stage goes to health and human services but that third stage does require Democrats to sit down and compromise because we don't have the budget reconciliation as an option and I think they're too partisan you have to factor in the politics you got to factor into the fact that they want Donald Trump to fail Congressman Johnson I appreciate you coming on the show it's always great to talk to you sir 
Always good to talk to you too. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.